What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a threat to you. So if you want to stay informed and safe with what's going on, the best way to do that is subscribe to my channel down below. If you want to help keep other people safe, by all means, share these videos with anyone you know. And if you give these videos a thumbs up, the more we get, the more YouTube will share this video in the algorithm. So let's try for 100 likes today. Seems like when we do 100 likes, it does actually work. Alrighty. Starting off today, we do have some news to talk about. We're going to take a look at this week's Walgreens data. There's a surprise twist with Walgreens. We'll get to that in just a few moments. We're going to take a look at some wastewater data. We want to see if any wastewater sites have updated to see if there's any surge starting from Syllabus. I'll explain about that in a moment. And St. Patrick's Day and Spring Break. Spring Break and Syllabus go hand in hand. What that is, is basically... A lot of students, college students, when they come back from spring break, then, you know, they start a new semester. They get orientation with the new class. A lot of them skip that and have parties. Well, that could cause surges in college towns. So we'll take a look at a few college towns today. All right, first off with the news. New COVID-like outbreak. Matter of when, not if, who director warns as scientists race to prepare using artificial intelligence. We don't even need to read the article. I can just tell you right off the bat several things that can lead to this. Number one, when COVID first came, we were not prepared for it. Uh, it hit senior facilities really hard. It hit hospitals hard. We just really weren't prepared. We tried to get prepared but as it was unfolding, but it was too little too late. Then once we did start doing the right thing, well, kind of here in the United States and elsewhere in the world, we relaxed precautions, allowing the virus to just do its own thing. Then we went out and oversold the effectiveness of the vaccine and told people, hey, you can't get infected if you're vaccinated. I personally knew very early on that was wrong because I knew someone who was fully vaccinated just a couple months after receiving his vaccine. And he tested positive for COVID and ended up in the hospital. Yes, it really did happen. It was sad. Luckily, he's still alive today. Why? The doctors flat out said if he didn't have the vaccine, he would not be with us right now. Alrighty. Another reason is that COVID, it weakens the immune system. By COVID weakening the immune system, yes, we're seeing these other viruses come along that, you know, that they're having like little bumps in the road, like M-pox, uh, now measles. We don't know how bad measles is going to get, but there's vaccines for it. If something new comes out there, we won't have a vaccine for it. And with weakened immune systems, no vaccinated people. It would spread like a wildfire. All right, moving on to the next story. This is uh, really interesting. This has to do with football. Not football here in the United States. The rest of the world, if you do not know, I'm sure many of you do, but maybe you don't know, call soccer football. Soccer, it, while it's becoming a bigger deal here in the United States, I got to admit, soccer's starting to you know, pick up the pace in the United States. It's not as big as it is in the rest of the world, and they call it football in the rest of the world. Well, COVID's impacting that. COVID-19 knocks down scoring skills in footballers, study shows. Let's come down here. Knowledge about the impact of COVID-19 on individual players' performance can be used to develop match preparation strategies and specific training. In addition to training, uh, assessing the role of injuries is also essential while investigating the impact of the pandemic on players' performance. And what they're saying here is if we keep reading, they're talking about mental fatigue following recovery from COVID-19 could also have an impact on player performance. And in fact, several players who recovered from COVID-19 reported significant physiological distress. Wow, that is something that is just really it's not good. And, you know, cognitive activity, I can never say that word correct. I think I just said it correctly. Activity, that's a problem as well. And it's leading to more mental fatigue. Now, if you want to read about this study, I did post it on my site. 
datareport.info and you can check it out there i'm going to be doing some work on the site i think maybe this evening i don't think i'm going back out this, i don't know i might be going back out to work this evening we'll see it's tuesday evening so probably not but uh you'll read this on the site i also tweeted out and you're going to see a couple other studies that i'm going to be posting in the near future on the site as well because i am trying to catch up all right this coming from the irish star now virus leaks in dozens of u.s labs could lead to next pandemic as experts worried so this kind of almost goes a little hand in hand with the first story that we shared yeah there's always leaks going on i mean that's kind of possibly how could we won't go into how covid started because we i don't i don't want to have that whole debate here on the channel in the comment section down below i'm sure you all have your opinions if you want to leave one down below that's okay uh, there's many different ways this could have started but uh i'm just just stay in here. Lab leaks. I mean, there's a lot of things that get tested in labs. I don't understand why they do things that they do, but they do. And, hey, it could lead to another pandemic. Yes, it's possible. All right. Taking a look at this day in COVID history. I typed in March 19th. Something did come up. This was actually a big day in COVID history. CDC asks healthy people to donate blood if they are able amid a national shortage of blood during a COVID pandemic. Let's face it, there's still a shortage of blood today. So if you're healthy and you feel you want to donate blood, uh, donate to the Red Cross or anyone who needs it, by all means, do so. Then we come down to this. This was a, a big story that broke headlines. Gov California Governor Gavin Newsom issues a statewide stay-at-home order to slow the spread of COVID-19, instructing residents to only leave their homes when necessary and shutting down all but essential businesses. I don't recall if they were the first one. Leave a comment down below if you know. But um, right around that week, man, so many states were starting to do it. Of course, the Democrat states did it first. And it just really... Um, took off then a whole bunch of states just start saying yeah this is getting serious we need to do it. i remember when uh, pennsylvania did it they did it by counties they were looking at the numbers such and such county will stay home and then eventually it just became every county it said they said you know what it's getting pretty serious all counties you need to stay home only go out if your life depends on it that's what they did here and yep today well we just pretty much let it rip now. All right, taking a look at today's air quality. And in the air quality today, you will see that it's not terrible across the country, but we do have our typical trouble spots, which the Great Lakes right now is one of them for some reason. I'm not understanding why, because there's a lot of a northwest flow. They're not seeing a southwest flow. There is some moisture in the area there, so maybe that has something to do with it. Ah, uh, West Coast, a little worse than we've been seeing lately. A lot of yellow and some reds in California. That's something to be concerned about. And still some yellows in Texas at this time. Philadelphia had 719 total EMS incidents yesterday. Taking a look now at the suburbs of Philadelphia, we can see here there's a few cardiac emergencies going on right now and a few other calls. Right now it's 12 total at the moment. That's live. So that's active calls right now. And Chester County, Pennsylvania has a few respiratory calls and a few other calls, including a sick person. And that's one thing I'm watching for. See if there's an increase in the number of sick person calls post St. Patrick's Day. Of course, spring break as well. Take a look at Walgreens. Here's the surprise twist with Walgreens. A lot of states that were not reporting came back. Therefore, a total number of tests came back. And it says last week was up as well. I guess they just didn't add the data last week. Well, they did now. But with that, positivity rate has dropped. And it says current week's positivity is 15.4%. The prior week was 17%. That's down by 1.6%. Uh, total tests, 9,357. Prior week was 10,988. But we do have some red areas. Let's go over some of these red states. Boston, you know, Boston has one of the highest, uh, um, has one of the highest Irish populations. So the state of Massachusetts would uh, potentially see a surge. Now you're seeing red here for a reason. Prior week had nothing, and that's the key with some of these states. Some of these states that did not report the prior week, that's why it's coming up bright red. So obviously, 14.3 versus 0.0. .0. Yeah, that's a big increase. 14 tests versus 20. Then we come down to New Jersey. That's red. Let's see what's going on there. Positivity rate is 18.4%. That's a significant increase. That's up from 12.5%. But testing is down a good bit. 283 versus 344. Again, that positivity rate is up by 5.9%. Pennsylvania, my state, a little bit more concerning because the testing decrease is not as big. Current week, 
14.2% prior week, 9.2%, a difference of up 4.9%, total test 113 versus 130, and we are going to take a look in wastewater at State College, Pennsylvania in just a few weeks, because last week was syllably Syllabus week at Penn State University. We want to see if there's any rise there. Taking a look at Indiana, your positivity rate is rising 16.8% versus 11%. That is up by 5.8%. Total test 155 versus 236, but we should be fair. Let's also take a look at some places that are dropping. And surprisingly, with all the crowds in Florida right now for spring break, Florida is actually dropping. That's a good thing to see. 14.7% versus the prior week, which is 19.3%. Difference of down, 4.6%. Total test, 1,116 versus 1,323. Let's go out to the West Coast now because we're not going to be seeing any other data for the West Coast unless we take a look at some wastewater sites out here. So West Coast, California, your positivity rate is 12.6% versus 13.4%. That's a difference of down 0.8%. Total test is 269 versus 238. Uh, ever so slight decrease in testing. How about we come down to Arizona? 16.1% positivity rate for you. That's down 4.6% versus the prior week, which is 20.7%. Total test, 193 versus 208. And Nevada is seeing an increase in positivity rate. And this is actually really concerning. 27.3% is the prior week. Or 27.3% is this week. The prior week was 10%. That's up by 17.3%. Total test. Just 11 versus 10. Just only one test more. Um, you're not doing a lot of testing. So that's one part of the problem. And plus, it's, it, again, it's a big increase. Do people spring break in Las Vegas? Anybody know? I don't. Uh, let me know down below. I think some people do. Because I remember when I was a kid, uh, my parents took a spring break trip to Las Vegas. So uh, maybe it is a thing. Incidentally, I couldn't go because I had the flu at the time. Yeah, no, no good. No fun. Oregon, wow, big increase in positivity rate for you. 42.9% is the current week, 17.6% last week, up by 25.2%. Total tests, 21 versus 34. Yes, your testing dropped. That's part of the problem. You might also be seeing some cases rise as well. And let's also take a look at some in the uh, Great Lakes. We'll do two states there, Michigan and Illinois. Michigan, 14.5% this week. Prior week, 15.4%. Difference of down, 0.9%. Total test, 235 versus 267. Testing did drop. And now Illinois, 16% positivity rate this week, 186 last week. Difference of down, 2.6%. Total test, 656 versus 764. Now let's take a look at a few wastewater sites. And we do want to take a look at State College, Pennsylvania. But first, let's come up here to Boston. I do want to see Boston again. I don't know if it's updated since the last time we checked it, but okay, it has. Yep, take a look at this. So on March 4th, around between March 1st and March 4th, COVID bottomed out. Now take a look at this. It's starting to see a rise. I said, Boston has a big Irish population, so they do a big deal with uh, St. Patrick's Day. It's rising. As you know, in many cities, St. Patrick's Day weekend is not just one weekend. No, 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 no. The pub crawls start the weekend before and sometimes two weeks before. Like State College, which we'll see in a moment, they had State Patty's Day. That was like two weeks ago. So, yeah, some places, they, they make a big deal out of it, and it's, it's prolonged. Get where I'm coming from? So, look at Boston. Boston is seeing a rise for COVID. RSV, they saw a slight rise. Now it's dropped a little bit. And both of these levels are still high. That's not good. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B, it's seeing a good size rise right now. HMPV is rising. Norovirus is rising. So, yes, you're seeing a wave of viruses in Boston post-St. Patrick's Day related. It's happening there. Uh, let's come down here. No, the, oh, well, actually, there is a detection of hepatitis A, but no detections of MPOX at this time. And I find it hard to believe you have that much hepatitis A. Again, I question some of these things sometimes, but what we just saw with the other viruses, that's legitimate. It's post-St. Patrick's Day. Let's go down to State College. Let's see. That's a college town, my friends. Let's see what's going on here. All right, State College has just seen an ever so slight increase in uh, COVID at this time. Pretty much the same from what we saw on Sunday. I don't think it's updated since then. We'll take a look again there, maybe over the weekend. Uh, influenza is not doing all too bad, just slight rises, slight rises. 
RSV is really down to nothing now. Norovirus did start to rise again, but now it's dropping ever so slightly. Mpox, you had a detection of Mpox on February 13th, and Hepatitis A, you did have some detections of that back in February as well. All right, moving on now, let's take a look at some other data. The latest variant that is in the lead is still JN.1, though it's decreasing. It's at 86.5%. It's decreasing because of JN.1.13 is now at 9.5%, and JN.1.18 is now at 1.8%. I think that does it for the CDC data today, because now we have to look at New Jersey. New Jersey is not dropping too much anymore. In fact, it's actually leveled off here a little bit. You can see it did drop a little bit, then it rose a little bit yesterday. Now it dropped by two. 350 people in the hospital, 68 out of 70 hospitals reporting, 22 people on a ventilator, in the ICU, 51 at this time. Taking a look at discharges, you did have 32 discharges in the last 24 hours. Again, we'll watch New Jersey. We'll also watch New York State to see if there's any increase. Not seen it yet in cases. 412 people have tested positive in New York State in the last 24 hours, or in the most recent update. And take a look at hospitalizations. They are pretty much just flat from yesterday. Yesterday they had 712 people in the hospital, 87 people in the ICU. Today it's 699 in the hospital, 69 in the ICU. Just an ever so slight drop. And that's it. That's all we have for today's pandemic update. Tomorrow we'll do some more wastewater sites out to the west. We'll also take a look at some more Walgreens. We'll have some news. I think we'll do an update tomorrow. I don't know. Stay tuned. It may end up being an out in the wild update or maybe no update at all. Maybe Thursday will be the next update. Just stay tuned because tomorrow's the start of March Madness. I'm thinking it's going to be a busy day for delivery, so I don't know. Alrighty, folks. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below and of course share this videos with anyone you know the more people you share this to the more my channel grows and we help keep people safe and informed i will see you all again next time until i see you again next time stay safe everyone and have a fantastic healthy tuesday afternoon thanks for watching